You are about to witness the greatest humiliation Garry Kasparov ever suffered in his legendary career. A crushing defeat in just 19 moves. And his executioner was none other than the computer, Deep Blue. It all happened in 1997, in the historic Man vs. Machine showdown. The score was tied after five games, and then, in this final battle, disaster struck. Okay, without further ado, let's dive into the game. White pieces for Deep Blue, black pieces for Kasparov. The game begins with E4, C6, the Karo can defense, D4, D5, Knight C3, D takes E4, Knight takes E4, Knight D7. This is the Karpov variation, which is quite amusing, considering that Karpov was Kasparov's great arch-rival on the chess stage. It goes to show that while there was fierce rivalry, there was never a disregard for each other's ideas. A quick side note, don't forget to support this video with a like and a comment. It really helps the channel, since that way the algorithm will recommend these videos to more and more people. Thank you so much for your support. Okay, the game continues with Knight G5. This strange move became popular in the 90s. One of the ideas behind it is to win the bishop pair. Knight G F6. In case of H6, white wins the bishop pair after knight E6. Good move. Queen B6. Of course not F takes E6 because of queen H5 check. G6 and queen takes G6 checkmate. For that reason, the best move here is queen B6, but after knight takes F8 white wins the bishop pair. Let's get back to the real game. As I said, knight g f6 was played by Kasparov. Deep blue bishop d3, e6, knight 1 f3, h6. It's a mystery why Kasparov tried to revive this discredited move since he was familiar with the standard bishop d6. Queen e2, h6, knight e4, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, knight f6, and so on. Let's return to the game. As I mentioned, h6 was played by Kasparov. Deep blue knight takes e6. Queen e7. It's questionable whether the queen is better on e7 or c7. Today, however, we know that the best move is f takes e6, followed by bishop g6 check. King e7. Castle kingside. Queen c7 and rook e1, with a dangerous attack against the piece, although black went on to win and draw several games in this variation. All right, let's get back to our game. As I said, Queen E7 was played by Kasparov, a blatant mistake. Deep blue castle kingside. F takes E6. Bishop G6 check. King D8. Bishop F4. B5. Another mistake by Kasparov. Here knight H7, with the idea of continuing with knight to G5, was the best opportunity to try to counter white's attack. Okay, white would still have the advantage, no doubt about it but black would at least put up a stronger resistance. This game is quite suspicious. It's truly astonishing that Kasparov, perhaps the greatest player in history, would make two such serious mistakes in the very game that decided this match. This is not normal, and it might reflect the exhaustion of the Russian, as well as the enormous psychological pressure he felt playing this showdown against the machine. The whole world was watching this battle between man and machine. Perhaps the weight of representing humanity itself finally overwhelmed Kasparov. All right, let's return to the game. As I mentioned, b5 was played by Kasparov. Deep blue pawn to a4. Bishop b7. Another mistake. Black's problem is that his king is never safe. Here b4 was the last chance to keep lines closed. Back to the game. Bishop b7 was played by Kasparov. Deep blue rook e1. Knight d5. Bishop g3. King c8. A waste of time since the king has nowhere to go. But if queen f6, then bishop h4 pins the queen. Back to our game. As I said, king c8 was played by Kasparov. Deep blue pawn to b5. c takes b5. Queen d3. Bishop c6. If pawn to a6, then c4. Knight b4. Queen c3. b takes c4. Queen takes e4, check. Bishop c6, and now rook takes e6 is decisive. Let's return to the game. As I mentioned, bishop c6 was played by Kasparov. Deep blue bishop f5. e takes f5. 
Rook takes e7. Bishop takes e7. Black gets two pieces for the queen. c4, and here Kasparov resigns, because although he isn't far behind deep blue materially, his king is exposed and vulnerable. It's only a matter of a few more moves before the machine hunts down and destroys the black king. For example, if black were to play b takes c4 now, white would then secure the win after queen takes e4. Knight b4, defending the bishop. Rook e1, attacking the bishop. Rook e8. Rook takes e7, an excellent move. Rook takes e7. Queen takes b4, and while black does have enough material compared to white, two of their pieces are stuck and out of play, namely, the king and the rook on a8. White's advantage is therefore overwhelming. After the game, a commentator said, Kasparov's resignation was perhaps premature. Another remarked, what we saw today was a psychological weakness we would never have expected from Kasparov. At a press conference, Kasparov lashed out at IBM, claiming it was difficult to prepare against an opponent whose games were not available beforehand. Anyway, this was Deep Blue's revenge, since the year before, in 1996, Kasparov had won the match with a score of 4-2. to two. This time, the winner was Deep Blue, with a score of 3 one half. Two one half. What do you think? Were the commentators right to criticize Kasparov? Or is he justified in his complaints? Share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to support this video by giving it a like, leaving a comment, subscribing to this channel, and sharing it with your friends. See you in the next video. Take care.